in order and ask you to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone, and good evening. I have a couple announcements. The front cover of the warrant that was mailed to residents lists the special town meeting as being on Monday, November 28th. That is incorrect. The meeting is on November 28th, but that is Tuesday. And the actual warrant inside that mailing and all the uh, advertisements reflect Tuesday, November 28th, as listed on the warrant inside. And that special town meeting will be held at the Middle High School on Tuesday, November 28th. One other announcement, the annual tree lighting ceremony will be, hold, will be held at the town gazebo Tuesday, November 30th. Thursday. 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 Here we go again. No, <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, November 30th, 2017 at 6 p.m. Come join the festivities and caroling at the annual tree lighting. This year, the uh, Lunenburg High School Student Council will have hot chocolate and cookies available for purchase on site. The event is organized by the school, the fire, police, and DPW departments with the support from the Lunenburg Turkey, Lion, uh, Lunenburg Turkey Hill Lions Club area, area businesses, and community members. And uh, I know that uh, a group of volunteers are also uh, decorating the center of town, which will be lit on the same evening. So the, again, the annual tree lighting ceremony is at the town gazebo on Thursday the 30th at 6 p.m. Alrighty. Is there any public comment from the board? I just wanted to mention that um, this year, prior to the town meeting on Tuesday, November 28th, the marching band is scheduled to play at 6.30 and 6.45. You're gonna, you should um, sign in and get your card for the meeting ahead of going to the concert because the town moderator is going to start the meeting on time. So you have to get into the meeting on time after you enjoy the music. Any public comment from the public? Please. Tom Alonzo, 284 Lancaster Avenue, coming before the board one last time. Uh, well, hopefully not one last time. Last time for this event. Uh, as a Boys and Girls Club Board of Director member, reminding people that this Saturday, Saturday, November 18th at 7 p.m., <laughs> Uh, is the uh, third annual rock and auction that will feature the live music of the Glue Factory, and will be uh, full of au auction items, silent and live auction items, uh, Chinese auction items, 50/50 raffle. There'll be a cash bar, and there'll be food samplings from local area restaurants such as Dragonflies, Dario's, Ixtapa, Bad Larry's, uh, and. I'm doing someone a disservice because I'm not remembering them, but hopefully I will. Anyway, the doors open at seven. It is twenty dollars a person, thirty-five dollars a couple, um, and we hope to see everyone there. It is sponsored by Simons and Bemis, and all proceeds go to the Boys and Girls Club. And the, the eatery I forgot is Ugly Omelet. So thank you. Those those uh, six places will have food, uh, finger food there for the event. So. Uh, you can buy tickets online. You can buy them at the door. It's a fun, fun night. I hope to see everybody in the board and everybody out in the audience listening tonight there for a really fun evening for a great cause. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment from the public? Okay. Our first agenda item tonight is, is a 705 license violation hearing for Embers Pizzeria at 84 Lakefront Drive. The I draw your, the board's attention to a letter received today, I believe, from the owner and license holder of Ember's Pizza. Apparently there's a question as to whether the notice of this hearing was delivered uh, appropriately, and he is requesting to reschedule for December 5th. Um, that is at the discretion of the board. I would make a motion that we uh, reschedule the Embers Pizzeria license violation hearing at 84 Lakefront Drive to December 
5th at 7.15 p.m. Second. Is there any discussion on that? Is, yeah. that? is that acceptable to the town and the police chief? Just a comment. We have of, uh, Excuse me. Certified mail and, and the, it actually has been returned to the um, to the town hall is not being delivered. It's not being signed for, you mean? It, the document was returned, tracking message came back, was returned to the town on November 9th. Okay. I would, might suggest that the police uh, hand him that notice. For the next meeting. meeting. This time? Okay. Just comment on the December 5th date. That's a discussion item for later in our meeting about our economic development workshop. That is the potential date for that workshop. So timing, I don't know if you want to consider earlier start to do the hearing. Or can, can, can I ask you to amend your motion to 7 o'clock? Uh, yes, uh, I would make the motion to uh, reschedule this for December 5th at 7 p.m. Amend the second. Any other discussion? Is that acceptable to, to the police department? Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Our next, is, uh, our next hearing is for 715, and I'd prefer to wait till 715. I'd ask if the uh, appointment for the toll booth request for the Salvation Army are ready. Please. <laughs> Good evening, uh, uh, board. Happy holidays. Uh, we're here tonight to address our boot drive. My name is Dave McDonald. I live at 155 Allen Road. I'm also on the board of the directors of the Salvation Army uh, for over 35 years. I also like to interview, uh, introduce uh, Envoy Lynette Valentin. Before we get into the details about our boot drive, I'd like to let Lynette uh, speak to the board about what we actually do. Good evening. I'm on board Lynette Valentine with Salvation Army, representing and serving Fitchburg, Lemonster, and Lunenburg. And the reason for the request is the money that we obtain from the boot drive goes a long way. It, uh, we were able to send children to camp. We run a summer fun program allowing children to come and parents not have to worry about how they're going to take on that at an expense of daycare and feeding their children. Um, we also have introduced a music mentoring program that's going very well. It's every Tuesday night. I just ran back over here from there, and it was actually very humbling to watch these children learn and enhance in music, something to keep them motivated <coughs> and occupied. We also have our food pantry that is open to the public. Again, Fitchburg, Lemonster, and Lunenburg, and it's every day, Monday through Friday. We do call for appointment. Uh, we just had a lot of need in our area. And it's, it would open your eyes and you'd be totally astonished by what the need actually is. It's not just the poor, it's the working poor. Do they pay for their rent or do they pay to have their utilities on? Do they fix their car or do they feed their children? It's just a really big need. So the boot drives allow us to make the money. All the money collected stays 100% in our area. The money comes in and it stays in our community. So we ask that you would grant for us to have the boot drive to continue doing what we do in the area. Thank you for that. So this uh, the Saturday on December 9th, we'd like to conduct a boot drive at the center of town at two locations, one at the center of town here and the other one at uh, CVS on uh, Route 13. Um, is it 13 or 12? 13. 13. 13. Um, I also want to thank a lot of people in town. Uh, every time we get together, we get major support from everybody, including the chief. And chief, personally, just want to say thank you for all you do for us and the community. Uh, so anyways, we, we filled out the paperwork. I think, uh, Ms. Lemieux, you have all that. Um, if anyone has any questions, we'll be doing it from 9 to 3. Um, also that day, just so you know, uh, Mr. Toll, I know you said about the Christmas lights at the center of town. Uh, we're also going to have our mailbox. And this year we're being sponsored by PAC TV. So please bring the kids down and drop your letters into the town center. And again, that's going to be sponsored by PAC TV. And on the 9th, weather permitting, we'll have Santa there as well. 
not the Salvation Army, we just have uh, Santa come while we're there. We, we know a lot of people, too. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Comments? Looking forward to helping out. And, and again, Mrs. Luck, I want to thank you and your family for helping. And this year has been a, uh, a really bad year, uh, as, as the news has shown. I mean, we personally went to Florida and handled Florida disasters uh, for two weeks during the summer. Uh, and it just keeps piling up. And it seems like there's no relief in sight. And a lot of these refugees are coming up this way. Uh, so uh, not only here in Fitchburg, Lemmis, and Lunenburg, but all across the state of Massachusetts that people should be aware of. So th this year, uh, the, the, the need is great. We also have another program called the Angel Program. Uh, so if anyone's interested in adopting a child, you'll see these located in some stores. But I personally have like 350 of them. So if anybody would like to uh, adopt a child, you can either go to where we have the... We have it at Whitney Field Mall and the, <coughs> in the box for dropping off is there. And also Dave, and we have Slotteries and Bootleggers and a few others that have decided to take angels to sponsor as well. Some of the banks in town also have the TV angels. So, mm -hmm. And again, this is all tax deductible as well, and you'll be helping a child. And that's what Dave, we'll could you be a little more specific when you say adopt a child? You mean you mean to buy presents for that buy particular presents. child? <laughs> 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 no, you, you can adopt a child. Or come. It's a new service. So, for example, I have a girl here. Her name's Marina. She's three years old. Uh, she needs clothes, and most of the children need clothes, just so you, you're all aware. But her favorite toys are Hello Kitty, uh, mm. Frozen, and I have no idea what that toy is. So, Chica. <laughs> I'm learning all these new toys. <laughs> like, that? I mean, you got Justin who just wants cars, so we'll get him cars. <laughs> so anyways, if anyone was interested in it, please, you can contact the Savage Army located on Main Street in Fitchburg or get a hold of me, I think. My emails are out there and whatever, or you can go through the town manager too. But again, we wish you all a very happy holiday, and if there's any other questions, as far as safety and all that, yes, we'll be wearing the vests. I, I think our Salvation Army kind of wrote the codes for boot drives in town over the course of the years uh, because of all the things we did. Uh, but safety is, safety is our first priority out there for everybody, so. Can I hear a motion to approve the uh, boot drive? I make a motion to approve the toll proof request for December 9th from the Salvation Army. Is there a second? second? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Again, happy holidays, Very much. everybody, thank and you. thank you, and we'll see you guys out there. Okay. And you. we'll see you on the tree lighting, which is Thursday or Tuesday. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All righty. All righty. Uh, our 7:15 hearing is a license violation hearing for Baker's Whalem Variety. Let me just mention what we're going to be doing. Find it. Uh, we will have a public hearing. Uh, everyone that testifies at that public hearing will need to be sworn in. We will hear the town present testimony on this uh, violation. The license holder or representative will present testimony. The board will ask questions. We'll close the public hearing, and then the board will deliberate and make a finding on whether there was, in fact, a violation, and if, in fact, there was a violation, if there's a, a penalty uh, due as a result of that violation. So our... Our violation is for Baker's Whale and Variety at 423 Electric Avenue. Is anybody here to represent Baker's? Please come forward. <clears throat> and I assume there's a complaining officer. <coughs> Hi. Would you both raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly and sincerely affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. So I'd like to introduce yourself, and then I'm going to ask the, the officer to give testimony. Okay. Oh, my name is Carol Baker. I'm the owner of uh, Baker's Well and Variety. Thank you. Good evening, Officer John Morelli, Jr. 
Following is a summary of events from Thursday, September 21st, 2017, between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Officer Tossi and I conducted an alcohol enforcement initiative utilizing a 20-year-old party who was known to this department. The purpose of this initiative was to ensure that businesses in town that were licensed to sell and pour alcohol were properly checking the identification of their patrons and no underage sale was taking place. The specific guidelines were given to us by Sergeant Hebert, who was trained in this topic. The underage party was a 20-year-old male who was known to officers at this department and is considered to be both trustworthy and reliable. In accordance with the guidelines, he was dressed appropriately for his age without attempting to present himself as older or younger than he was. He was wearing a green Bar Harbor Whale Watch t-shirt, light brown khaki pants, and black boots. A picture was taken of the party's attire. He was instructed to enter stores and bars attempting to purchase alcohol without identification. He was instructed not to have any other belongings with him for the duration of the initiative and not to be deceptive with his requests. The party was subjected to a portable breath test, PBT, at the beginning, which yielded a blood alcohol concentration of 0.000%. He was provided with $80 for $20 bills for use if he was able to successfully purchase alcohol. <clears throat> If he was successful at a store, he was instructed to bring the alcohol directly to us. If he was successful at a bar, he was not to touch the alcohol in any way. The initiative was conducted at all stores and bars in the town of Lunenburg. The list below represents the two violations that occurred. All remaining businesses abided by the law and regulations denying the sale of alcohol to the underage party. Baker's Will and Variety, 423 Electric Avenue. At 6.15 p.m., the party entered the store removed a 12-pack of 12-ounce Coors Light cans and brought them to the counter. He advised that the store clerk, later identified as Rosita Claudio, did not request an identification and process the sale. He then exited the store at 6.17 p.m. and turned the beer over to us. A receipt is attached to this report. At the conclusion of the initiative, the party was administered another PBT, which resulted in a BAC, BAC of 0.000%. Officer Tossi and I returned to the two establishments to advise them of the violations. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have some testimony? I'm, I'm, it happened. <laughs> it happened as he said. Mm -hmm. The only thing, I wasn't, I wasn't there, and um, when the officers came back to tell her that she had sold uh, alcohol to um, uh, a 20-year-old, she was you know, it wasn't done purposely. Um, so she called me right away, very upset. And I was very upset also, because the first time in 20 years, we've had alcohol for 20 years, and we've always got commendations from the state and from the police department and so on and so forth. Um, but um, uh, it, 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 it happened. Uh, she, she couldn't believe it, but you know, I mean, it happened, so I mean, I believe that, I believe it, you know, uh, th th what they're saying is right. I'm not going against it. Uh, so we, we did, you know. Mm -hmm. That's and what have, you, what have you done to prevent it from happening uh, again? What I've told my employees now is to make sure that they look at the person. Uh, and um, according to the state regulations, uh, it's 27 or under. You have to check IDs. I told them I want them to check IDs now for people that are at least 30 years uh, or under. And um, I also um, want them to be cognizant of uh, new people coming into the store that they've never seen before or sold alcohol to before or ever carded before uh, to actually card them no matter what age. Uh, they could be 40, 50, I don't care. You know, so because people sometimes look younger, you know, look, look um, they, they have the, the young looking faces, so I mean, they may be 40, 50 years old, and you're thinking they could be, you know, 20 years old. So I don't know what much what more I can do, you know, to, uh, to I hope it never happens again, obviously. Any other questions? Any other testimony? Okay, I'd like to close the hearing portion and ask the board to consider if in fact they believe there's a violation. So um, this is consistent with our last hearing that we had on the various uh, establishments who uh, had violations. Uh, I believe there was 
a violation in this case, and I'm prepared to make a motion to that effect. Any other comments? Uh, I agree with Mr. Ebersol. I would move that uh, we find that there was a violation. I'd second that. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And as to penalty, um, based on how we handled the other ones, uh, especially in the light, light of the, uh, the long period of time uh, this establishment has been in place, I would move that we uh, issue a warning. I would second that as well. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So we will be issuing a warning, and that, that will stay on your record, but uh, we appreciate that you've taken some action to correct the situation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Couple of minutes till our 7:30. So why don't do we have any? We do have minutes. I have minutes for the October 10th workshop meeting <coughs> and for November 9th, which was at the, uh, the finance <coughs> public hearing. And I appreciate. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Mrs. Luck for taking those minutes. Attorney Warrant. I have a, an accounts payable warrant in the amount of $254,015.09. Another accounts payable uh, deduction warrant. Is it payroll deduction? Accounts payable. Yeah, it's a payroll deduction for $24,125.06. And a payroll in the amount of $1,631.18. And a... Of the payroll in the amount of seven hundred eighty three thousand two hundred four dollars and fifty three cents. Anything else we need to sign? No. Is there any action file issues? Anything? Well, you know, one thing I was wondering, I know that <clears throat> in my October twenty fourth school committee report. I mentioned that the school committee had reviewed the master plan for Turkey Hill, options for relocating the central office, and the joint meeting with the BOS. I haven't received these plans yet. Have you? Have you requested them? Um, options for relocation of the central offices, plans for Turkey Hill Elementary School, and there are things that they want, they're going to discuss at the meeting, so I thought it would be helpful if we had them in advance of our meeting. I can request if they're available. They must be because they were at the school committee meeting. Yes, um, the ones that were distributed at that meeting, they were circulated by Elaine to the board. Okay. And they might be in your Google Drive folder for the 21st. Uh, There's a couple of things in the 21st. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. So we have to look, we have to oh, look that's ahead. that's clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's great. Yeah, the agenda isn't in there yet, but there's a couple items, mm -hmm. and I, I do believe I saw something from the school. I don't know okay. if that's the whole thing. Okay, great. Any other action file issues? Okay. Um, you know what? Why don't we... You want to do this one? Let's the first one. Um, maybe you want me to do my report this time? Or? Yeah. Because it's going to okay, take a little bit of time? Sure. 
Mm -hmm. Why don't we go and, and have the uh, town manager report? Do so we have we that it on here? It's in the Google Drive, yes. I'm going to skip over the first item because it's later on in our agenda. It might take a little more time. So just two um, quick things to report on. There was a, another workshop held as part of the DLTA funding to look at promoting the local economy. This meeting was, again, with the businesses. And the notes from the November 6th meeting will be available on the website tomorrow. And that was the meeting with the residents. So MRPC will be put, putting together recommendations based on these meetings that we've had held with both business community and residents. And I would like to schedule a date for MRPC to come in to present their findings to both the board, the planning board, invite all the participants that have been involved thus far, plus as well as the public. The two possible dates for, would be a special meeting on December 18th, which is a Monday, or at the board's regular meeting on December 19th. And is there any, the December 19th meeting, we, we don't have a workshop or anything scheduled, but, okay, and it's far enough out that we probably don't know how crowded that agenda is yet. Yeah, I uh, anticipate the annual licenses will be okay. at that meeting, but right now that's all I'm aware of. Okay. I won't be available on the 18th. How much time do you think they'll need? I would assume allowing participation or commentary, I would give an hour. Okay. You want to tentatively put that, why don't we plan it for the 19th? And if, if, if that starts getting crowded, maybe we'll revisit it. Okay, it's a good uh, idea. Okay. And just a quick update on the website. We're currently in the design phase. Um, Steve and I have been working with uh, the company, and we should be launching at the end of January, beginning of February. Great. Okay. There's a lot of clamoring for that, both at the, yep. at the workshops mm -hmm. and in social media. So we're, uh, everyone's waiting to see a, yep. an updated version of that. That's terrific. I'm very excited myself. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have a 730 tax classification hearing. I need to read something if I can find it. Here it is. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on November 14th, 2017 at 730 p.m. as required by MGL Chapter 40, Section 56 on the issue of allocating the local property tax levy <coughs> among the four classes of real and personal property for fiscal year 2017. The hearing will be held in the Lunenburg Town Hall, second floor, Joseph Wada meeting room at 17 Main Street. Jamie told board to select them. Now, we do, I guess, we do have a presentation, but I guess I will open the hearing and ask our Associate Regional Assessor, Rebecca Fouché. Tell us what this is about. All right, you're going to have to bear with me. I'm losing my voice. Oh. So. <laughs> so every year before we set our tax rate, we have to allocate, decide how the town is going to allocate the tax burden. So we present to you a bunch of information so we can make that decision. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This past year, the town was revalued as part of our intramural adjustment. Our total value of town is one billion dollars, three hundred and twelve million. New growth came in at four hundred and eighty-one. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Four hundred eighty-one thousand dollars this year. A lot of that was from we did some discovery, hiring a new personal property company. So your, <clears throat> your estimated levy 
is about $25 million to be raised. And we're estimating that your excess levy capacity would be about $900. Of course, you still have a special town meeting coming up, which could change a couple things. <clears throat> but that's what we're looking at. Your property classes, your residential, is about 90% and your commercial, industrial, personal property is slightly less than 10%. <clears throat> so your estimated tax rate is looking at about $19.70. Therefore, for every dollar that you increase the commercial rate, you would probably only decrease the residential rate 11 cents, which isn't much of an alleviation of the tax burden. Your average tax value went up for your single family home class about 4.4%. So your new average single family tax bill is gonna be about $5,500. I did want to say that commercial industrial did stay relatively flat this year, and the residential class was about 5% increase in value. Um, trying to keep it short, obviously, because of my situation, I, of course, would be happy to take any of your questions. Mr. Chief? Yes. Um, just as a point of history, um, before Proposition 2.5, uh, the city of Boston taxed commercial property at a much higher rate than its residential, and there was a lawsuit, and they said that you can't do that without authorization. As a result, they changed the law to allow a community had to consciously change the tax rate uh, to tax businesses higher. Um, this is an option for places that have a very large commercial base. Mm -hmm. But as you've seen in the news, the city of Fitchburg and the city of Worcester is trying to move to a more of an equalized rate in order to support economic development. I believe Lemonster has an equal rate, so there. Lemonster is a single rate? With a single rate. So um, I, I believe that um, while it's always good to try to reduce residential tax bills, um, the impact on the businesses in, in Lunenburg would be tremendous and the impact on the residential would be minor. So I would be opposed to doing anything other than keeping it what it is as a single tax rate. I, I should mention that, that there in, in your report it does have a recommendation from the assessor's office yes, to keep it, single rate. A, keep it as a single rate. My question is the, the rate itself calculated for 2018 at 28 cents less than 2017 is that first of all is that an anomaly or does it go up and down and second is that is good is that a good thing that I think it is well your tax bill will probably still go up but values went up the budget didn't go up as much as values did so that's the trend we're seeing this year in most of the area cities and towns is that the tax rate is declining I guess mr. chair I, I had a question because over the five-year period from 14 to 15 it went up a thousand dollars and then ten thousand then eleven thousand and fifteen thousand this year that seems like a big jump who, who determines that on the average tax bill or the value um, the value so we do a big analysis looking at all the sales on different property classes and that's what's determined using sales to see how much our assessment compares to sale prices and we need to be within certain parameters. So it's related to market sales? It's related sales. to the market sales. 15,000 seems like a big jump. I mean, you know, because the tax rate goes down a little bit, your, your taxes still go up because your house valuation went up so much. Right now we're seeing many properties in Lunenburg actually selling in excess of their asking price. The trend is continuing. So it's yes. just a mathematical calculation based on, based on selling prices. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> I guess that's good news for somebody. 
If you're selling your house, I guess it is. Yeah. Being here now. And the taxes are determined not by your valuation, but what we do at town meeting for what we vote for the budget. Correct. I would move that the Lunenburg Board of Selectmen vote in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 40, Section 56, as amended the percentage of local tax levy which will be borne by each class of real and personal property relative to setting the fiscal year 2018 tax rates and set the residential factor at 1.0 with a corresponding commercial industrial personal property shift of 1.0 pending approval of the town's annual tax recap by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. You, again, I am sorry about my voice. Okay. Hope you feel better. <laughs> Thanks. My Thank kids you. are enjoying it. <laughs> well, we have 10 minutes before our scheduled APDC appointment. Um, I'm going to take a chance and open a discussion on the possible recommendations, if any, on the special town meeting articles. And my objective there is that we had a we had a, a posted meeting in conjunction with the finance uh, committee's public hearing on on the Warren articles, and the selectmen uh, went through all the articles and voted our recommendations to uh, special town meeting, which we will share with special town meeting as the moderator requests. Uh, Mr. McQuaid was not there, but has had an opportunity to to read through the minutes and also to uh, look at the YouTube from that meeting. And uh, I just question if there is any discussion required or if Mr. McQuaid has anything to add to the discussion. No, uh, I'm reviewing the meeting and your minutes. I uh, agree with the recommendations listed out by the board and also the ones that you <coughs> said you'd wait for further input on. So, so ultimately, on each of the Warren articles, we, the, the selectmen came up with three possible responses to the moderator. One is we'd like to wait until the presentation at town meeting to make a recommendation. Two is that we make, recommend for approval. And the third choice is we recommend against approval of that particular warrant article. And in all cases, now that Mr. Uh, McQuaid has weighed in, we, we were unanimous in whatever we will recommend as the warrant articles go, go forward. And as a point of reference, we did not take a position on the two, uh, two or three uh, collective bargaining agreements because we don't have the numbers before us. Uh, we held on the playground, and we recommended we're recommending disapproval of the moratorium on the public buildings. All others were recommended for approval. <coughs> okay, so now I think we're close enough to 7:45 to. Mm -hmm call up the APDC and to talk about their guidelines. Guidelines and regulations. Yeah, I gotta find it though. It's the one with the seal. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you expect one? Should, should I wait? Okay, then I will wait. Would, uh, I expect everybody to be here as well. Uh, so, I did bring the laptop to-, to Why don't you go ahead and- If you want me to set that up. Yeah, that'd be great. And in the meantime, why don't we do our committee reports? Uh, <coughs> Mr. McQuaid, do you have any? Yeah, I'll just say that uh, capital planning, we've scheduled our, our tentatively scheduled, uh, pending the, uh, you know, department heads accepting our schedule, uh, the dates that we're going to hear their presentations on the, their individual capital requests uh, mm -hmm. through the month of December uh, and uh, one meeting in January. But uh, so we'll be getting the, that feedback back shortly. <coughs> um, at the, the school committee accepted a $2,500 donation from the Connor Lawrence Memorial Fund. And their next meeting will not be tomorrow night, but it'll be on Thursday because of a scheduling conflict. Steve Maladrinos will provide an update on the proposed IT implementations that will likely have budgetary impacts. 
Um, Adam Bruni, myself, and Jack Rabbit, and two reps from our consultants, DCI, attended the mapping app training that Paula Bertram had recommended at the um, that was conducted by MRPC. It was it was very interesting. The Central Mass Regional Stormwater Coalition's annual meeting will be tomorrow morning at 10 at the DEP Worcester office. Uh, someone from EPA and DEP will come to address the MS4 permit. In late October, I visit a program offered in the Westford Public Schools. It's called the Living Lab, and it was a stormwater presentation where the DPW director took the kids out into the um, driveway of the school and showed them what a stormwater, what a catch basin was and what the <laughs> drainage was, showed them the rain garden, and then they went into school, and the DPW director and somebody from the water department did lessons with them on what a watershed is and um, how we can all protect our waters better. It was really interesting. It was nice to see the way the school and the town organizations worked together. It was a great program. That's it for me. Um, the Lunenburg Charter Commission uh, is meeting tomorrow night. Um, and one of the things that's happened as a result of uh, us sending out the Lunenburg Charter to various committees is that people are actually reading it and understanding various things. Um, recently, the, the Library Board of Trustees um, is reviewing it, and they may propose some suggested changes. But one of the discussions that came out as a result of reading it is that there are trust funds that are controlled by the town and trust funds that used to be controlled by the town but are now controlled by the library if they relate to the books because it actually states it in the charter so the charter does provide information on that um, we're continuing to meet and go through the various uh, items and we will have continued um, information on that um, and that's it for me the finance committee uh, met last Thursday and had their public hearing on the uh, special town meeting warrant articles. I would encourage anyone who plans on attending the special town meeting if they want more detailed information, the YouTube on that particular meeting is very helpful in that it actually goes into a lot of the numbers behind the warrant articles. Um, I met this morning uh, with the, well, the, the Council on Aging met this morning and I sat with them. Uh, they did review uh, the charter as part of the input process and uh, had no immediate input but but were you know interesting uh, interested to see where it was and how to get at it and and what it contained uh, they also are in the process of putting together their goals the goals for the Council on Aging and wanted to set a time up in the relatively near future to present those goals to us and I said I thought that was a great idea mm -hmm and uh, may even be a model for uh, as we work to improve our communications with boards and committees to, to have a schedule where various boards and committees can, can come and spend 10, 15 minutes with us and tell us what, what it is they're working on and what help they might be looking for from us. So uh, uh, the, the chair of the Council on Aging and the director of the Senior Center are, are working on that and uh, we'll try to get on our agenda uh, right after the holidays. Great. Hey, I have a question about charter review. How long does that take? When will it be ready for the next annual town meeting? That, that's our goal is to have it for the annual town meeting unless we find that we're not ready for it. So would, then would it go to the next annual town meeting? No, it could be acted upon at that meeting. Okay, but I mean, if you're not ready for it. Oh, right, right. We could, we could go to the spring. You, you could do it at this, the, the fall town meeting. Oh, you could you do could, it at fall yeah. town meeting. It doesn't have to be annual. No. Okay, thanks. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm running out of fill. Designer selection? Yeah, you want to do designer selection? Sure. Great. Okay. That's included um, in my report, so if you want to follow along. So the designer selection procedures that are in your electronic packet tonight <laughs> are following designer selection law which is under mass general law chapter 7c sections 44 through 57 
and that requires municipalities to adopt written designer selection procedures, which must be used when contracting for design services for any building construction, reconstruction, alteration, remodeling, or repair project that has an estimated construction cost of more than 100000 and an estimated design fee of 10000 or more. It must meet both of those criteria. Design services include the preparation of master plans, feasibility and other studies, surveys, soil tests, cost estimates and programs, preparation of drawings, plans, specifications, including schematic drawings, preliminary plans and specifications, supervision or administration of a construction contract, and construction management and scheduling. The Office of Inspector General has modeled procedures, which the designer selection procedures before the board tonight are based upon. The town last updated these procedures in 2005, and there have been changes in the statute, which are reflected in the updated version. So just to review three basic steps of design services uh, as we're moving forward in this process with the buildings to keep in mind. So uh, one major stage is the planning stage, such as a feasibility study, which includes value engineering. A uh, second stage is the design stage, which would be a schematic design, then preparation of final plans and specifications and other bid documents and updated project cost estimates. And lastly, contract documents and contract administration services. So if you had any questions on the procedures, that is also in your packet. And like I said, it's an update from the 2005 written procedures. And again, you set a value for the work, right, and people, so that's known ahead of time, and then you're just picking the designer based on their qualifications, not a, they're not bidding against each other. Right, this basically sets out the established procedures of how you're gonna evaluate proposals mm -hmm. when you're putting them out to bid under designer selection law. And this is seems to be pretty consistent with what we've done in the past for mm -hmm. things like the DPW building and mm -hmm. other things like that. I would make a motion that we adopt the submitted designer selection procedures. As submit. Is there any discussion? I, my only discussion point is I, I, I do believe that there's, there's one item on the special town meeting warrant that that calls for some design work, but it doesn't meet this criteria. So I just wanted to point out that while we, while we'll follow some of these best, best practices, it's not, it doesn't fall under the requirement. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Well, guys, it's 7:45. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. It's on his way. Fortunately, he lives just on the street, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a few minutes. If, we, if you can indulge us for a few more minutes. Okay. That'd be fine. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm Richard McGrath. I reside at 22 Cushing Lane. I am the chairman of the Architectural Preservation District Commission, hereafter referred to as APDC. At the annual town meeting on May 2nd, 2015, the town voted to create the Architectural Presenta Preservation District. This bylaw was created to protect the historic architectural heritage of Lunenburg when the town voted to open up the center of town to development with the Village Center District bylaw. The APD was set up to form the rules and regulations <coughs> of the APDC and to administer them. The APDC is an independent commission. After two years of work with ma many meetings and lots of homework and research, the Architectural Preservation District Commission guidelines and regulations are complete. <clears throat> Tonight we will go over this document page by page and then at the end, I presume the Board of Selectmen, uh, as usual, will have questions and comment as well as public comment and questions. <clears throat> On November 20th at 7 p.m., at the Ritter Building, the APDC will hold a public hearing, at the end of which the Commission will vote to accept the APDC guidelines and regulations. 
in the spirit of the truth that gratitude is always in order, I wish to acknowledge uh, the members of the commission, Brian Corcoran, Colin Dwyer, and Jim Levesque, who collectively worked diligently on forming of this document. I was amazed and elevated by their capacity, intelligence, and devotion to the task. My gratitude goes forth to Adam Burney, our guiding light without whose extensive experience and understanding of the structure of documents, procedures, and government, we would have been lost in the woods without a compass. His door was always open to me. Thank you to Elaine Peterson and Lynn Claft, who were always available to answer questions and offer advice. This novice chairman is deeply grateful to their, for their help. Also, thank you to Heather Lemieux and Jamie Toll for their guidance, support, and leadership. I am deeply grateful to my wife, Laura, for giving me up on meeting nights and homework nights and for her typing and editing skills. <laughs> Lastly, I would also like to offer the Commission's gratitude to the body of selectmen of this town for their input, advice, and important questions. The Commission found our working relationship very helpful in the drafting of this document. We'll now go forth with the presentation. Thank you. Assuming it's okay that we're over here. Um, uh, you, uh, if, if you're going to speak, you're going to need the microphone, though. Okay, why don't you call your meeting to order and maybe someone could hand this microphone to Jim. Um, Jim Levesque, 33 Lancaster Avenue, Vice Chair of the APDC. Um, like Brian said, we went through a lot of, our, as, as Richard had said, we've gone through a lot of work to come up with these. Uh, we believe that they are capturing the intent of the bylaw as well as providing some guidelines around the implementation of the bylaw and uh, the bylaw as amended. Um, and available. Um, so we have previously submitted uh, a version to you to look at in August. Um, what this red line version that was emailed to you and which is uh, I'm displaying here shows the changes that have been made since that date. Um, so obviously the table of contents has changed and all of the changes are, are in line here. That probably needs to be made bigger. So one of the things that we did also when we were going through the bylaw and the regulations just coming preparing for this uh, meeting was to identify the areas in which the regulations and the guidelines met with the bylaw and where they were supported by the bylaw. Um, our mission had not changed since uh, the August version and this is supported by section one of the bylaw. Is that big enough for has to read. I want to make it. Oops. And I'll note that this is also on the town's website. Yes, we did. We did uh, have that uploaded also, also on the town website, um, and it is available for, uh, as Richard said, the public comments and additional public comments on the twentieth. So the uh, APDC mission is supported by section one of the bylaw, which um, is to preserve and enhance the historic character of the architectural preservation district and the town in general. Specifically, our bylaw authorizes the APDC to regulate the alteration or demolition of contributing properties. Um, any building or structure, including stone walls within the APD that is greater than 75 years old is considered a contributing property. Those are the things that we would be looking at um, in terms of any, uh, any alterations or demolition. Um, were there any, I, I don't know how, we'd like, how you'd like to go about this. Do you want to address this section by section or did you have specific questions based on the red line or just should I point out the red lines to you? 
I think it makes sense to go through what you changed from our last okay. time because the last time was publicized as well. All right, thank you. Um, we uh, we did change. Um, so there was some concern about the meaning of historical value and how we were using that in terms of uh, making our decisions. And so we what we wanted to make, make clear was that in looking at a project on the whole, that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at individual pieces of the project. Is how does the project on the whole either maintain or add to the architectural uh, preservation of the of the contributing property? Um, some of the things that we would look at relative to historical value is the known history of the project uh, of the property. Uh, and so we listed the five different things here that we we would be looking at. Not each not each of these bullet points would apply for every instance. For example, adding on to a a residence or a contributing property, knowing the history of the property wouldn't necessarily <coughs> play into a decision. But having a decision to demolish that property, knowing the historical value of the property may play a part in that decision making. So um, these are all these are the things that we would be looking at. Uh, nothing has changed in there. Um, we did identify that the field guides. We, we looked at some different style guides to provide uh, some additional background. We um, uh, addressed where we get where people could find this field guide to American houses. Uh, as the guideline, we do have copies as uh, members of the APDC as well. So, um, as as people are becoming more familiar, there's that is available. Um, we also noticed our uh, the Secretary of the Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties and guidelines for preserving, rehabilitating, restoring, and reconstructing historic buildings uh, is available on the Interior Department's website. There are uh, several references within this document that, such as painting of the brick um, and how to clean brick properly, that uh, are supported by the Secretary of the Interior's um, document on, on how to do that and what is, what's appropriate for uh, that kind of uh, uh, rest restoration and rehabilitation. Uh, we did have all of the definitions. Uh, nothing has changed there relative to that. Um, again, on the design standards, we wanted to make it clear that we're evaluating as a whole, not just individual pieces of a, a project. Um, and we would be looking at the, the various uh, historical values that we've discussed previously and the features that are available. Um, and we talked about the various features of a home, the windows and doors, sidings, um, windows, uh, trim. Uh, here we talked about the, the brick, and I did reference uh, re that uh, brick and stone need to breathe, and this is based on the U.S. Department of Interior specifications, uh, specifically in, in the masonry section of that very long, uh, very thorough document. Um, we did remove this requirement about rotten chimneys should be dismantled and rebuilt. Um, ideally, reconstruction would be used as original material. Rotten chimneys shall not be pointed. Uh, we've determined that that was not supported by the bylaw, and we, we removed that as uh, one of our, our uh, regu re regulations. Um, evaluation of criteria. So this is where we also mentioned again the rotten chimneys. That's why we removed it uh, from one section. We did want to specifically say it's not listed, but it can be uh, part of. While it's not specifically listed, it could be um, part of the demolition by neglect definition. Uh, and then we went through the application process and how the hearing process would work. There didn't seem to be any questions on that except for some of the um, materials that we were uh, requesting. We did remove those. 
Um, so we refer back to the bylaw section nine relative to the design standards. Um, and we did remove uh, the reference to the APDC weighing cost. Um, it's not up to the APDC to determine if it's a cost effective solution uh, or, or correction that needs to be made. Um, and we're not assigning any kind of dollar values to that because it is a, a wholly subjective um, process that we don't feel the uh, the commission is qualified to to, to do. Um, relative to the effective date, we haven't changed anything here, but I, in uh, correspondence with uh, Selectman Ebersol, uh, this will probably likely be December 1st of this year after we have filed it with the town clerk and accepted it as the commission on the 20th uh, next week. Uh, the only thing that changed in the appendices is uh, we added a, um, so we got rid of, we, we added the certificate of completion because we did realize that we had talked about certificate of completion in the, uh, in the process. Um, and we did not include that in the, the workflow, so we've had added that to the workflow. Um, in the descriptive workflow, we've also added the certificate of completion, the com uh, completion of the compliant work, uh, which is supported also by the, the bylaw. Um, we did also remove the old PDF version of the scanned bylaw. Um, that was difficult to read um, and we went to the uh, 360.com and uh, added those the bylaw directly from that the, which also includes the amendments um, that the other version did not have that were was amended in, in the May 7th uh, town meeting so those are That's the one that went away. Fortunately, with the red line, it still shows everything. Uh, we did also include the demolition delay bylaw because the um, uh, that had been a, a power that was um, transferred from the Historical Commission over to the APDC. So we wanted to include that as well for um, people's information. And those are, are all of the changes that we made at this time. Questions or comments? Uh, first, I want to say thank you for all the effort that everyone on the board put in. Um, just want to ask: Did uh, Adam Bernie have review the red lines that you did, or has he seen that? Uh, you you went over the red lines with, I, I believe, uh, Chairman McGrath went over the red lines with Mr. Bernie. All right, because it's, uh, it's just the the only one thing I would point out on your page twenty six. Uh, item number five, where you say the APDC will use design standards documented in the bylaw section nine in considering any proposed changes. Uh, that's the line that brings the whole, the whole document full circle for me and uh, ties it back to the original bylaw. So I just want to make sure it's abundantly clear that it's referring to that section 113-9 or the first time I read it, it was a little vague when you just said documented in the bylaw section nine. So just want to make sure that it was abundantly clear for anyone reading it where they're going to reference Section 9. Yeah, um, at the time that we typed this, it was off of the old PDF version. The 113 wasn't part of the lexicon. Um, what we can do is before uh, Monday's meeting is reference using the new numbering structure from the 360 version. If that helps clarify that, that'd be great. Thanks. And I would echo my um, thanks to all the members, current and past, for the work that went on this. This is uh, uh, not an easy process, uh, nor do I expect it'll be an easy process once you actually go to implement, because that's when the work actually starts. Um, 
my property was uh, the first demolition of a property when we had the demolition delay for our barn when we took it down before when it was falling down. So knowing that process, it's really important that this be as documented as possible with the understanding that after your first or second application, we may be back, you may be back okay. to propose changes, and that, that is always an option that can be done. Um, uh, I've had several conversations uh, uh, or email conversations suggesting various changes, um, and uh, I believe they've been incorporated on here to clarify things. So um, I think this is uh, light years ahead of the, f the first application, and I think it's going in the right direction. I think we're there. Thank you. I'd also like to, to commend the commission on their work. I, I know how difficult it was, and the topic also is, is, a, is a difficult topic and, and not universally appreciated. Uh, but I, I think without, without a document like this, the, the village district bylaw doesn't work. Uh, the dis, any discussion about the future of, of the town, the town center, and the historical district don't work. And I think uh, you very objectively and very comprehensively put together a regulation that, that may need some fine tuning over, over time, but I think it's an excellent, excellent document. Yeah, and as a, as a resident of the district, one of my questions I would ask myself when we come up with something is, is this a hoop that I would want to jump through myself? Um, and I tried not to make it encumbering on me uh, as a resident, so we, we frequently would bat that around. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know that we need to take any action on this, right? We, well, we, well, we, um, I, I I think that it would be. It, what's interesting, the bylaw provides that it be presented to the Board of Selectmen, and um, I would say that that I would be prepared to make a recommendation uh, that it be accepted. I uh, don't know if the rest of the board is ready to vote on that. Is, is there anybody from the public that would like to speak before we have that discussion at the board level? Please. My name is Dave Rogers. I live at 82 Highland Street, and my house is in the last is the last property uh, in the district on Highland Street. And I appreciate the opportunity to come forth this evening because this is the first time in three meetings that I've been able to express uh, any discussion relative to this process. Um, I've been denied the opportunity to do so, so I, I uh, Although there is uh, no comment on the uh, agenda this evening about public comment, uh, I do appreciate uh, the opportunity. Uh, is, is this all right now, Mr. Uh, McGrath? Please direct meeting? your discussion to me, uh, Mr. Rogers. It's his meeting. No, no it's, it's, I, it's my meeting. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, is, is this all right for me now to, to speak? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have some, some lingering concerns uh, relative to uh, the bylaw. And the first uh, one I'd like to um, get a clarification on is the uh, section uh, that deals with um, uh, ancillary buildings or specifically a motorhome. Would you be kind enough to explain that to me? your meeting could you explain it to me uh, which which uh, temporary buildings yes page that's page 18 <coughs> begins on page 18 and your question would be mr. Rogers I don't understand it
So temporary buildings appear to be exempt, and the, the difference is, is the amount of time they're exempt from the guidelines. So your question would be what, Mr. I, I, it's ambiguous. It says that it's exempt, and then it goes for three months, six months, and then a year. My question is, what happens after a year? They have to be removed. They have to re be removed. So a person that has a motorhome that's duly registered uh, cannot have it on his or her property for more than a year. Uh, the short-term temp exempt temporary buildings, vehicles that act as buildings, recreation homes, buses, coaches, it's parked on land and blocking the facade of the contributing property. So it relates to the being in front of the building. And then the medium term are bigger building, bigger properties, again, blocking the facade. Um, so th those relate to blocking the building. The long-term exempt temporary buildings may remain exempt for a term of one year that act as buildings not blocking the facade and not parked on land cleared and graded for use. Not parked on land and graded for use by motor vehicles. So I would say if it's not blocking the facade and it's parked on land that is cleared and graded, it's allowed to stay. For one year? No. 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 It's after, if, so it's basically saying back of the house on land that's cleared and graded for use by motor vehicles, you can keep it there. That's, that's not how I in interpret it. And I, I well, unfortunately, what it says is that the following are exempt if it's not blocking the facade and are not parked on land cleared. So if you turn it into a positive, that if it is parked on land cleared and graded for use by motor vehicles, then it would be okay. Um, would you agree that it's a bit difficult to understand? Unfortunately, as a lawyer, I would say this is legalese so that it covers... Does it pass the grandmother test? Grandmother is probably not driving the motorhome, but... She might be a passenger. She might be re residing there based on homelessness. The, po the point is that it, 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 uh, it says temporary buildings that they're permanently exempt, and then it goes to say that, that for three months and six months and then a year, and uh, if it, if it uh, is parked in, in front of the property or the side, I mean, it's, it's, the devil is in the detail, and it's one of the things that, it's, it's certainly not a, a huge thing, but it's, uh, it, uh, there are a whole bunch of these little uh, vignettes in this, in this bylaw. Um, on page... Um, let me see. Yeah. It, it talks about um, the. Um, I had it marked and I'm not coming to it. Yeah. There's, there's a portion in the. Um, in the uh, guidelines and the regulations that deals with um, uh, the ability of the APDC to to look at um, the plans as submitted, and if uh, for whatever reason they they do not agree with that, uh, it's grounds uh, that they can uh, deny or uh, ask for a, a change, and that seems to be. Uh, a bit onerous in so far as I'm concerned. I, I would say that, that that's consistent with the way, whether you may like it or not, the way the planning board operates on subdivisions or special permits that somebody comes in with a plan and if it doesn't meet the requirements or it doesn't address the issues of the bylaw, mm -hmm. then they have the ability to ask for changes. Okay. In the in the document itself, it, it talks about sliding glass doors, and it says um, as uh, back up a little bit. It says that the the APDC will will look at all of this uh, as it relates to um, the portions of the building that are uh, visible from the front. But then it talks about the 
sliding glass doors on the rear of a property and if the the sliding glass doors have to be replaced then you have to go before the APDC uh, and get the blessing and that seems to me to be counter from what they're what they're saying uh, if if it's for the whole house then it's for the whole house but it's they're talking about the the front of the house uh, that's viewable uh, from the uh, uh, from the road so I I, I want to know what what does that mean so Sliding glass doors and glass and porches, porches are not historically accurate features. Again, we're talking about buildings over 75 years of age. Mm -hmm. uh, APDC may allow the installation of new sliding glass doors or solariums in areas of the property may, that are not visible from the public right of way. May. Right. Why, why doesn't it say shall? Generally, anything that is got to be done with a building they have to verify that it's not visible from the public way you've lost me I don't understand what does what does that mean give me an example if you would Yeah, but if, if it's purely just a replacement of a sliding glass door, and I, I've had to replace a sliding glass door in my house. It, and if it requires a permit and it's a, a contributing property, the land use director will notify us that there is a permit request and we do need to look at those. So in that instance, it would very likely just get a rubber stamp that says, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, we have to look at, are we, is it, Altering the current right of way view. If you already have a sliding glass door in front of your house, you not in the front, in the back. Yeah, but if you had one in the front and you wanted to replace it now, we wouldn't say no, you can't do that because it already exists. Mm -hmm. So why then do you need to have approval from the APDC if it already exists? If, if there's a permit involved, then the permit. But that's the way the process is going to work. The regulation reads new sliding glass doors. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't I think believe, they mean replacement. Yeah, I believe it infers that, that, that we're not talking about replacements. They're talking about a, a remodeling job where a new, where somebody's determined that they're going to put sliding glass doors on a, a contributing property. Is, is that how you read it? Sliding glass door breaks and you have to have it replaced. You don't need a permit for that, do you? Right. So. Routine maintenance of contributing properties or repairs or improvements which do not require a building permit from the building exit. Commissioner are specifically exempt from the requirements of this bylaw. So if your sliding door breaks, you do not have to go to the APDC because it doesn't require a building permit. If you've got a six foot door and you're going to put an eight foot door, you have to have a permit and then you'd have to go to the APDC. Even though it's in the back of the house? Because it's to make sure that you're not doing anything else that's affecting the property. Um, do, am I correct by saying that the uh, siding, uh, vinyl siding, uh, is, a, is approved? Um, The, the wording is, in some instances, modern replacement materials other than wood in the original size and shape may be permitted by the APDC. The APDC will review each proposal on a case-by-case -case basis. May. So if, if that's right, and it's ordered to verify that if currently you have a two-inch reveal at the bottom going up to a three-inch repeal and you're going to come in with six-inch siding, then they have the ability to review and may say no because it doesn't, it's not in the historical context. It's not that it's the modern replacement, they have to look at the entire review of the process. 
But if it's two for two, it would be approved. They have to review each proposal on a case-by-case -case basis. I think it would probably re be re approved, but mm -hmm. we have many properties in the district that currently have vinyl siding. Okay. Uh, greenhouses. The regulations note that modern-style greenhouses will not be permitted. What is a historical sty uh, style greenhouse? Again, the it. Am I correct in saying that metal roofs uh, would not be approved? Do we have metal uh, roof on the library? I believe the 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 Ritter building or the library. The library. I don't know what's on the library. Hmm. I, th I think it is. It's not a historical building. Sorry. It's not a historical building. It has to be over seventy-five years old. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not going to belabor this point, uh, but I, I will tell you that that. Um, I still have concerns the, the way uh, this is um, uh, written. Um, um, instead of saying that you uh, would be permitted to do it, it says may, uh, which, which leaves um, a great deal of uh, wiggle room available. And, and frankly, the way this uh, whole thing came about um, does not leave me with a good taste in my mouth, and I'm not, I don't have any confidence that the interests that, that I might have would be adequately um, uh, and objectively uh, looked at. And that's how I feel. Um, uh, and it's... Uh, I'm, uh, the, the other question I have, and Bob, you, you said this evening that you... You had uh, some communique with the uh, with the folks on this on this commission about various things. Would you share that with us? Sure. What I identified various typographic errors. I asked questions about how this was going to be actually played out. How does it um, does it affect new construction? So a brand new building being built on a vacant lot would not be subject to this because that's a brand new building. Mm -hmm. How does it actually play out with public buildings? Public buildings are subject to this as well. Mm -hmm. So it was clarifying. Uh, I proposed various recommended changes uh, to uh, references to the bylaw, making sure that it wasn't the old bylaw, but that was because it was the red line version. The old bylaw was in there, mm -hmm. and the new one, that, that was the communication. Um, anytime I had a specific concern, I went to a meeting or uh, raised it here at the selectmen's meeting, a substantive mm -hmm. issue. So I was talking to them about procedural. Mm -hmm. the, the reason I ask is that I, I was at the last three meetings and, and, and none of this red line uh, stuff that I, I uh, heard uh, was taken up and I just wondered if it was um, carried over to other, other times when um, you know, more in-depth and detailed discussion was concerned. And the reason I have concern about that is that, as I said, Mr. Chairman, I uh, uh, I tried three times to, to be heard and was not allowed. But yet people can go back and forth, and they're they're given the courtesy of answering back and forth. And I'm 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 certain that that uh, uh, Mr. Ebersole's stature as a as a selectman, uh, you know, has more carry than than just Joe uh, Citizen. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, we're we're looking for for things, and I'm I'm just not. Uh, comfortable that, that uh, this was done in a manner to which uh, I was uh, satisfied. Uh, one other thing, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, to bring to your attention. The, the, uh, one of the three goals that the Board of Selectmen have is to improve public satisfaction through community involvement and public outreach. Um, and I think that this board does that. Um, and I will tell you that, that I don't think that the 
uh, APCD does. Uh, as a case in point, I want to make a reference to uh, the meetings uh, this evening. There's a meeting of the Council on the Aging, uh, the Capital Planning, the Sewer Commission, and the Board of Selectmen. Um, and the APDC is part of this meeting. The, the four that I mentioned all have um, public comment at the beginning and at the end, which is the way we've done things here. Um, this has not been the way um, this has been handled recently. And uh, I understand that, that, as I said, Mr. Ebersole is a, a ranking member here, uh, so uh, he, can, he can get the ear, but I, I can't, as Joe Citizen, uh, come up and, and uh, uh, say anything. I was, I was denied, as a matter of fact. The last Mr. thing that- Mr. Rogers. Yes. Okay, can I, 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 I'd like to respond to that. Sure. Number, number one, the, the, any, any board has the ability to have an agenda set by their chair, and it's at the discretion of their chair. Number two, the meeting that was posted tonight was a joint meeting and was posted for the purpose of having the APDC join us and have a quorum present so that we could have a discussion. You are now standing at a podium having your open discussion, mm -hmm. okay? Now, also, I've given you quite a bit of time to have public discussion. Do you have another point to make? I've got a bunch, but it's... it's uh... I'll take one. No, that's fine. I, I, I understand. You, you certainly have set the tone that, that uh, regardless of uh, constitutional rights, et cetera, et cetera, uh, uh, a uh, chairman of a, of a committee has the right to prevent public discussion. And that, to me, is unconscionable. And I'm, I'm, I'm really disturbed that you, and I presume that this entire board goes along with it, and the, and the manager, because they're not saying anything. I, I, I just don't understand this. Are you not standing there right now making a public comment? I am, but I haven't been allowed to previously. And, and, and to it's be very- In this body. No, no, not in this body, well, then, in that body. I'd like you to keep, in that comments, body. keep your comments to this body when you're making a public comment in this body, please. You know, <laughs> it's, it's the uh, intent of the law, not necessarily the letter of the law. And you, you as well as anybody knows what I'm talking about. So uh, if that's the way it is, then that, it's, a, it's a sad day in Lunenburg. Anybody else have anything they'd like to say? I would make a motion that the selectmen recommend to the APDC that they adopt these regulations and guidelines with the recommended clarification for the reference to the actual code bylaw. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Look forward to your public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk for a moment about our upcoming schedule. We've covered everything on the agenda, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we do have a meeting on the 21st. It will be a continuation of our discussion that we started on uh, buildings uh, and infrastructure. I remind you that the 28th is our special town meeting. Uh, and we are planning an economic development workshop in December with the dates to be published shortly. Is there any public comment from the public? Any public comment from the board? Uh, do we have the dates for the charrettes slash walk hammered down that we could announce? That was we addressed at the, the last seventh, meeting. December 7th, I don't know if we... And December 2nd, I think, was the walking the walk tour. Do you know what time the walking tour is going to be? I don't think we established a time. Okay. For either. It would be important, I think, because Saturday's a busy day, and there's a lot going on in the area. So earlier, as opposed to the middle of the day? I would think so. I think, you know, 10? 10, 10 a.m.? I would Fine. think. Then people okay. can get on with their day. Oh. And that was Saturday, Saturday second. Second. December 2nd. December 2nd. The center of town. So, yeah, and we'll have to kind of... 
I mean, we can hammer out the details, but at least right, want yeah. to get people to save the date. If we have save a meeting the date, place, the time. if we can start maybe here. Sure. Town hall. Uh, just, to, just to outline what we're talking about, at last week's meeting, we talked about having, uh, leading up to a charrette, which is a kind of an open input meeting from town people on, on the uh, building infrastructures, the, the uh, town-owned buildings in the center of town, we planned two events. One would be a, an actual walking tour of the five buildings that we're talking about and we're scheduling, we're trying to schedule and nail down December 2nd for that. Uh, we'll work out exactly uh, where, where that begins and ends and who does what uh, as soon as we possibly can. And followed with a, a meeting, most likely here in town hall on the 7th, mm -hmm. that would follow the format of the charrettes that we've done in the past for, for other uh, topics where uh, citizen input was requested and required. And the December 2nd meeting is mostly going to be outside, so people should dress for the weather. Right. right. And I don't believe we'll have a meeting afterwards or anything. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it'll be, if you see us walking around, you want to jump in and tag yeah. along, that's fine. All right. Um, okay, if we've covered that, I'd like to entertain a motion to enter executive session under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, under Reason 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's bargaining position, and the chair declares so. And this is in regard to the ASME Council 93 Municipal Employees Union contract negotiations not to return to public session. So moved. Second. One Hold. last. <laughs> okay. Before you jumped ahead. Um, the Economic Development Workshop, December 5th. Does that work for everybody? So we can finalize that and send it to the planning board. To. That's, and a normal, the that's a normal. That's a more normal meeting night for us, sure. and it's the first Monday, which accommodates the sewer commission. And it works with sewer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that works. Okay. Sorry, I didn't interrupt. Actually, I think they. Let me check their agenda, because I think I saw that tonight. Regular meeting rescheduled because they were not going to be able to meet the night of uh, special town meeting. Mm -hmm. So special town meeting bumped them, so they, they bumped it to the fifth. To the fifth. And that would make December nineteenth, I think. The well, how about twelfth? That would be, it's not their normal meeting. Right. They have uh, so they're canceling the twelfth. Well, they normally meet on the second oh. and fourth. Tuesdays. On the 19th. So I would say we have it the 12th or the 19th, whichever one the planning and the sewer can make. Is that okay? We were talking, what were we talking about doing the 19th? 19th MRPC with a presentation. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we do that the 5th? Or is that too soon? That's too soon. I, I wouldn't think that the sewer would meet again on Two the 12th after the 5th. I think that the 12th is probably safe. It's not that much. I can't, I can't speak for them, but I, yeah, I don't think they're going to do it two weeks in a row. I'll check with planning to make sure, and sewer, obviously. See if okay. everyone works with everyone's schedule. Okay, I had a motion to enter executive session that was seconded. All those in favor, Mr. McQuaid. Aye. Mrs. Luck. Aye. Mr. Ebersol. Aye. And I for myself. 